Hi, Willie. Thanks for doing this. Thank um, you. I saw you were teammates with Mackenzie uh, in Akron in 2018. How well do you know him, and what do you look like tonight compared to what you remember from him? Uh, yeah, um, I remember him. You know, we've been playing together since uh, Lowey. Um, he, he's a great guy, you know. Uh, used to be um, great teammates. Uh, I know a lot of them uh, from here, from the, they're all in the big leagues. Uh, most of the, the guys that I uh, play down there in double A, and it's great to see them. Did you have, did you have an idea he might start you off with, uh, with that pitch in that second half bat, or is that just kind of a reaction? Yeah, yeah, I had an idea, you know, um, he, uh, he passed me with two, um, two change-ups, and I know, I, I knew that he was going to uh, start with a change-up again, so I was just waiting for that to get a good contact. Well, especially, you know, having not pitched since 2018, but also having gone through the injury issues he's dealt with, did you know what to expect from him? How how impressed were you with what he was able to do? Yeah, I know. Um, you know, like last year he was uh, hurt. Um, he was uh, he wasn't playing for a while, and then he came back this year. And they told me uh, some of the guys that I speak with, they told me he he came even even better this year, and it's great. It's great to see him. And uh, yeah, I know you you were going through some struggles here. Um, you know, for for a little while, was there anything you did with your swing, your approach? Did you work with uh, Joe at all, or are you, what were you able to do to get back on track? Yeah, I just think I'm a little too like a little too excited sometimes. You know, like trying to swing a bad pitches, and uh, you know, I'm just trying to just come down a little bit, uh, see good pitches, and try to hit it to the middle. Was there anything sweet about homering in this ballpark since you came up with this organization? Oh yeah, well, it was great. It was great. I, well, I was I was waiting for that. You know, um, you know, I came out from this team, and um, yeah, you know, I just got a good contact, and um, that happened. Matt, um, good good bounce back for you today for sure. Um, what's your what's your emotions though um, in that sixth inning? Uh, having to come out of that game at that point, and um, obviously the leadoff walk was. Was probably what you regret more than anything. Yeah. Can you take us through your thoughts there? Um, yeah, it's uh, I mean, you know, it's leadoff walk stuff. I, I I put my team in that position there, and that that was that that's tough. You know, you you don't want to do that. I just, you know, I had to be in the zone a little bit better. Uh, missed down a few times there uh, with Ramirez, and um, you know, that's just the way the, you got to face a guy like Lindor. And you know, make a pitch that I want to Lindor, but the guy he's 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 a good hitter, right? Put it in, and he he finds a way to push it to right, and uh, you know that's why he is the hitter he is. So um, that's uh, that's just you know it's it just starts from that first guy. That's uh, you, you lead off walks, uh, walks in general hurt, but lead off walks it's, it's just not a good time for it, especially where we're at in that uh, the order, um, pitch count wise, all that. So um, you know, just that's tough, but. Um, you, the changeup was was obvious. I mean, you had you had great action and great reaction from their hitters on your changeup. Mm -hmm. But did your ability to to kind of command that fastball back on the inside part of the plate set that up? Was that as important yeah. as the changeup? Oh, completely. You know, you can't just roll with one pitch alone, right? Um, very few guys have that pitch uh, that you can just roll out there and throw it every single time. But um, you know, Romy did a great job of setting guys up, starting the heaters away, working in, you know, and then working the changeup. I mean. You know, we, 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 we understood their approach. You know, the, the hitter will tell you their approach as they go out there and as they start to swing, as they start to take pitches. And, you know, you have your game plan going in, and then, but game plan is just here. It's right. You know where to go with the swing and miss. You know where to go. You know what his strengths are, but then, you know, they'll tell you the rest, they'll, how they're taking pitches, how they're swinging at pitches. And, um, you know, he just did a great job of uh, balancing that out and working the curveball in and, you know, we had the slider there when we needed it um, and uh, just didn't have to use it as much because the changeup was the one. And that's, I mean, you know, that's uh, that's how we've always, you know, kind of seen uh, with Andy and, and Romy, you know, and Gray Grayson, you know, my game is that I can pitch with the changeup. I can pitch with the curveball. I can pitch with the slider. I can pitch with the fastball. I can do 
you know, whatever's working for what we needed, we can do with it. And uh, it was a uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, um, working with him tonight. He did a great job. You've been really stoic through this whole process leading up to this start. But how how important was it for you on yourself to have these results today? Oh man, gosh, it's Chris. You know, chasing results is very short sighted. Uh, it's a slippery slope, if you know what I mean. You know, you got to understand how you define success, and understand what you are going about in um, like having the awareness to understand what you're doing. Right, every every pitch you get feedback. You know, whether it's a nine inning shutout or three innings, and you you can get your teeth kicked in. It's always learning about what you get from it, and because um, there's going to be times you go out there with horrible stuff. And you'll get a shutout. And there's times you go out there with great stuff and, and it won't go your way. Um, so you have to have the awareness of saying, okay, what's my game? What do I expect myself when I get out here? And then go about it one pitch at a time like that. And then, you know, take from it what you can. And then once you take from it, move forward. Whether it's, you know, in the moment, one pitch at a time or afterward in reflection. So um, that's just what we keep doing. Ever since, you know, we, we, we got here for summer camp, it's just continuing to learn learn from what we did and then keep moving forward and you know assess what we did and keep moving forward from that thank you very much yeah thanks chris a nice question comes from jason back from mlb.com hey matt thanks for doing this yeah. um how much was the change up about was this a pitch you wanted to work in the start regardless or was this a pitch that you felt like could work against this team in particular given some of their numbers against off speed pitches both you know, definitely both. I mean, we saw the results where it was in Chicago, especially when we started using it that second time through the order, um, kind of from Mankata on. And, uh, I mean, you know, we st first time too, you know, if you can, you, you establish the heater, right? And uh, changeup just works off of that so well. I mean, the slider does too, but, you know, changeup's always been my best pitch. That's what, uh, you know, when I was little, um, I never was allowed to throw a breaking ball until high school. You know, my dad was always my pitching coach, and he never let me throw a breaking ball until my freshman year of high school when I started throwing a curveball. So my changeup was always my best pitch, and it's uh, it's, it's just been, you know, it's like, hey, you know, we got chocolate cake in the fridge with my slider. You know, never had chocolate cake in the fridge before. I got to stop eating it so much, you know, and, uh, you know, know that there's other stuff in there that we can we can go to as well. So, uh, you know, the game dictated that we use the changeup and. Um, if it dictated another pitch, then we probably would have gone to it, right? So uh, it's just, you know, there's, there, there's like, like I said, we have a plan to go out there and attack a lineup, and then they'll tell you what to do after that, you know, the swings and, and what everything was. And that was just a great job by Romine using it today. Speaking of the curveball, it looked like you mixed that in a little bit more mm -hmm. once you got, you know, second and you know, third time through the order. Yeah. Is there something you were seeing from their, their hitters that uh, made you think this might be a good pitch to play off of some of the other stuff? Well, well, the curveball and the changeup really play off each other. You know, we establish the fastball and then the curveball, and it's coming in and it's coming straight down. It's right on that fastball line. Um, and then, you know, when you come back with it, go with the changeup after that. It's always a good combo because it's, you know, go with the curveball. Guys gear up for a fastball. That's what the I mean. That's what the changeup is. When you're throwing a changeup, you know, it's 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 you're getting them to swing at a fastball, right? That's the goal. Uh, Dino's changeup is like you know, almost a screwball, right? He can get it on that. Guys will know it's coming, and you'll still get guys out. When I'm throwing it, I'm throwing it with the intent of, hey, look, fastball, hand speed, and get them. So, you know, when we used it, it was sometimes in fastball counts, and then, you know, a lot of times where I'd come back of fastball even with missing it, then that's when you throw another changeup because you know you can get back in the zone with it, and it's just it's a it, it keeps guys off balance, right? Um, you know, the speed differentials too. So using the curveball to change up. You know, and uh, it's a, uh, it's you know, Romine did a great job calling that game and uh, in setting those guys up. You've been in that position that uh, their starter was in tonight. How impressive was that for a kid who hadn't pitched above Double A and hadn't pitched in a game since 2018? That's a, it's impressive. Um, man, he got a lot of fastballs, uh, strikeouts with fastballs in the zone, and uh, I think that tells you how kind of electric his stuff is. Um, you know, uh, hats off to him, man. He uh, he pitched really, really well tonight, and uh, to do that in a debut, um, and that's uh, that's impressive. So uh, hats off to him. You know, these guys are uh, it's like the, these guys got an embarrassment of riches with uh, with uh, their starting rotation and the guys that they keep running out there. So uh, 
um, hats off to him, and uh, you know, it was, it was a good job by uh, Tristan. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Jason. I'll take one more for Matt from Cody Stavenhagen from the Athletic. Hey, Matt, just looking into some of the data a little bit, it looks like your your release points tonight were far more uh, kind of consistent and in line with all your pitches tonight. Is that something you uh, were conscious of? Could you feel that difference tonight? Yeah, you know, uh, it's that's what we're working for, right? Uh, every day we're just getting a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And, um, and you know, my base, best baseball is ahead of me. Well, one thing that we were working on is just staying upright and continuing what we have been, right? It's just, it's, there's a game wedged in there, but every single day we're working to get better, working to be more consistent, um, whether it's with my arm slot, with my posture, and uh, it's it's just continuing down that path, right? It's understanding how you measure success, right? One of the ways we're measuring success, success is and attacking one pitch at a time and staying in it. And then there's going to be games when, you know, like, like there are pitches where I come out of it, and, uh, you know, today, um, and you know, and that's uh, and that's going to happen. It's just having the awareness to come back and get back in it. And that's what we did today is just, just having more awareness and uh, and staying you know consistent with that release point. I know kind of every bit of your mechanics affects something else, but do you yeah. feel like for you that's the posture is the most important part in getting that arm slot where you want? Or? Yeah, right now it is. Um, you know, there's it's uh, there's always something that you're working through as a starter. Um, I, like I, I've said this, you know, it's like a broken record. Pitching, every pitch you throw is feedback. So whether it's, you know, sometimes it's posture, sometimes it's, okay, I want to make sure I'm driving out of my heel instead of my toe on my plant foot. You know, if I'm driving out of my toe, sometimes that, that breaks posture. So, you know, posture is huge, but it starts from the foundation. You know, we kind of got the foundation anchored out, and it's like, okay, let's get back in the position we want to be right now. And, I mean, last year it was something as simple as, you know, hey, staying on top of the baseball with my hand, not just getting lazy with my wrist here staying on top and through so uh there's always something right now that's one of the things that we're focusing on and continuing to work through it you know and there'll probably be something else another day and then you just cross that bridge when it comes we're hoping at first we'd get through it but what maddie walked two guys in that inning and uh, talking with andy andy said he's he's gassed so i think we might have let him face one more guy and that was it and then got him out of there with the submariner come in all of our charts said that's the right guy and uh for that part of the lineup uh, just didn't work out. He didn't make enough pitches. You know, he got he got the big out with Reyes with the slider. Right. And then and then he had the right handers coming up after that too. And do you think he nibbled? Did you, when you when you watch it, he got ahead of all those guys and then and lost them. Do I think Schreiber. who Schreiber? I, yeah. you know, he threw a couple of. I don't know what was going on. It looked like this ball was slipped slipped out of his hands a couple times. So. You know, whether the ball was slick, I don't know. Uh, you just have to talk to him. Uh, normally, that's a situation, like I said, if you look at our charts, that's his area to come in, and, and it just didn't work out today. He, uh, they hit him through the holes. Encouraging, though, even in the loss, the way Boyd kind of found himself a little bit? Oh, yeah. We were really happy with that. We were, That was uh, the best of the year. He got us into the second half of the game, although just, you know, um, a, a little bit into it, but that's okay. He was in the sixth inning. He was still throwing the ball okay, but like I said, we felt Andy felt uh, he was gassed, and that's why he ended up walking a couple guys. He misfired just enough, so so we still had the shot to get out of it, and uh, we just didn't get it done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chris. Our next question comes from Jason Beck from MLB.com. Yeah, hey, Gardy. Um I know we talked going into the start about Boyd using his changeup more. We seem to see an awful lot of it today. How much of that was about just him mixing things up, and how much of that was about the Indians, you know, I guess for the season, struggling against off-speed pitches? Well, I mean, Matty, that's what he has to do. Uh, that was Matty Boyd uh, that we've seen, uh, the good Matt Boyd throwing. Uh, he, I mean, he, he was in command out there. It wasn't taking nine hours to throw every pitch. He was the pace of it was good. Everything that he's been working on that we've been talking about, he did it out there tonight. He did his job, gave us an opportunity. We didn't score enough runs. Uh, uh, you know, you're pitching with a one-run lead. You know, that's kind of a dangerous thing when you get to the second half with that lineup. So, but Matty did his thing. He did great. 
What did you see from their starter, especially with the body frame? Was there a deceptiveness to him, uh, notably with the fastball? Well, he had good pitches, too, above average pitches. His fastball was, you know, up there mid-90s type thing, and he had a really sharp curveball. He had a decent changeup. The kid had, you know, had it going on. He was tough. Um, and, like, he had movement on his fastball. So, uh, you know, tip your hat to that kid. He threw the ball great. You, you haven't had a whole lot of these games where – uh, you, you were protecting a slim lead and they rallied off the bullpen. Your bullpen has been so good. Um, how difficult is this one? And does it kind of feel like one that uh, maybe had a chance, maybe got away a little bit? That we might have won one, you mean? We, we, had, we had opportunities to get some hits, uh, but not many of them. Oh, I think we only ended up with two. We, put, we hit some balls hard uh, at people. A couple times, and but like I said, their kid pitched really well. Their bullpen came in and did a shutdown. Um, that's kind of what you have to do after you score. Uh, and like I said, holding on to a one-run lead is is not an easy thing to do anyway. A lot of things can happen, and it did. We uh, we had a bad inning out there, and there you have it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Jason. If any other questions for Darty, please put those in the chat. Back to Chris Mikoski of the Detroit News. On the on the double that cleared the bases from Santana, um, I know that ball was smoked. It was 107 miles an hour off the bat. But were you surprised that it got all the way to the wall between the outfielders? Well, I mean, and you're 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 playing shifts out there, so I mean, he hit it right in the right spot, and like you said, he hit it. He crushed the ball, so you know that's going to happen. It's not like you know they decided to give him that gap and play somewhere else. Dave puts them exactly where they're supposed to be, and they stay there, and the ball just hit right in the center of them.